Alright, so I'm feeling pretty unhappy um, because I forgot to save and my computer went down and I lost about four hours of work. Considering that four hours is about all I had, um, it's uh, really annoying. So I'm just going to go ahead and rig up the mesh as it is and who gives a fuck about making it look good at this point because I am really sick of working on this mesh uh, after losing four hours of work. So I'm going to teach you how to rig something up for Unity for Mechanim to be specific. So you have to go ahead and add in a bone, like this. But why did you add it over there? You are retarded. I have to add in a bone, like this. And then move it up something like this. Uh, now you're going to want to turn on X-Ray, which is down here under... Hello? Where is your X-Ray button? Oh. Um, Ah, oh, there it is. It's under mesh, or under whatever the box is. Um, so you can see that this is offset, so let's go ahead and press tab to enter edit mode, and we'll move these nodes around until they're in the right spots. But one thing we have to remember is that Mechanim likes to have a root bone separate from a pelvis bone. So what we're actually going to do is uh, we're not going to make this the main chest bone, but instead we're going to have a little root bone like that. Um, and this is not something... I, I'm a little uncertain as to whether or not Unity intends for us to do it like this or what, but um, I think it's really annoying, so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm doing it wrong. So there's our bone, another bone, here's our neck, here's our head. Now we need to do some hips, so I'm going to grab this joint here, and I'm going to extend it out to the right. But you can see that we've only got one side, so let's turn on x-axis and forked. There you go. Now for a human, you generally want the hip joint to be near the outside of the leg because that way when a human kicks sideways, lifts their leg out to the side to do splits, the hips don't bulge up. Uh, they don't, you don't get these massive swell of hips. Um, but for a robot, we actually want that because the hip is a mechanical device. Uh, so it makes more sense for it to be in closer. And then we'll just extend down to the knee and extend down to the ankle and then extend forward to the foot. We'll move this joint forward. There we go. So now we want to do arms, and we just do the same exact thing but up here. And then out to, oh, nope. Out to the elbow, and then out to the wrist, and out to the hand. Now, when you are um, uh, doing these bone structures, all of the tutorials will tell you to name every single bone. But if you're doing this in Mechanim, um, I mean, I guess it's unprofessional, but I only name enough bones to give Mechanim an understanding of what the hell is going on. So let's go ahead and do that. So this will be, uh, boop, there you are. This will be the pelvis. Uh, this will be shoulder L. This will be shoulder R. This will be neck. This will be foot L. And this will be foot R. And there we go. That should be enough for Mechanim to understand what each of these lines is. Uh, and we could name this hand L and this hand R just for a little bit more. The next step here is to apply this mesh to the bones. Uh, and to do that, you need to select the mesh. Now make sure that you have resolved any deforms that you've got. The only deform that you might keep is a subsurface deform. Um, you don't want to keep a mirror deform, for example, because that'll mean that you'll only attach to the right-hand side and it'd be really screwy. So I've actually gone ahead and resolved all of the deforms I had on this mesh, which was just a mirror. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bond it to the bone. Now a big part of the way I work is I try to make the automated algorithms do as much of the work as possible so that I can move as fast as possible. So I actually almost never retouch my bone weighting. And instead, I try to build my meshes and my bone structure such that the bone weighting will be correct from the automatic bone weighting. So now that I've selected the mesh, I'll hit Shift and select the bone structure, and then I'll hit Control p and then Armature Deform with Automatic Weights. There we go. 
So now if we look here, you can see that we have the armature deform. Now if you ever need to delete the, uh, the assignment you've done, so you know, clear out the bone connections, just delete this mesh, just delete this modifier, uh, and it will, uh, it will just go away and you can do it again. Uh, to check and see whether or not that took, we can click on the bone structure and then change from object mode to pose mode. And then you can click on any of these bones and you can just rotate them. Now you can see that we have an issue where uh, our backpack tilts when we move our leg, but that's kind of acceptable for now. I don't really care enough to worry about it. Um, later on, uh, the 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 torso is is much smaller than the backpack is, and that's what's screwing up our bone weighting. So later on, we could go on into the backpack and reassign all that to the uh, um, to just the the central bones here. But as you can see, that worked. The bones are assigned correctly and our mech can move. So let's save that, go over to Unity. So I've already got this mech selected here in Unity. When you select the mech, you can have several, when you select a mesh, you'll have several of these things here. Let's go ahead and select a rig and change it to humanoid, which tells Mechanim to actually go ahead and, um, you know, take over. We hit apply. There you go. Checkmark means it got all of everything. It got everything perfectly. So if we go in, we see that it did in fact get everything perfectly. It's got all of the stuff assigned exactly as we wanted it. All we needed to do was make sure that the bones had enough of a name that uh, Mechanim's automatic uh, systems could determine which bones were supposed to go where. And uh, yeah, everything worked out fine, uh, including the head. I think where's the head? Oh, here it is. Yep, neck and head. Uh, if we were going to do the hand, um, the the actual fingers of the hand would each have to be named, which is kind of annoying, but uh, uh, it, it's it's not that bad, and we're not doing the hands yet. So Mechanim takes animations, uh, and you can get a large number of animations for free, um, including some that are provided by Unity, but they're not very good, um, and by that I mean they are good. They're actually often professional quality, but they are, they're usually for whatever character was in the creator's head. So, for example, if I were to go to the asset store and get myself some animations for a knight, then I would have a very uh, knightly animation where the knight would walk around and, uh, and be all knight-like. It wouldn't be um, very mecha-ish, and it wouldn't have any of the mechanical properties I want. And the same would be true no matter what characters I was doing. Unless I happened to be doing a character exactly like the one that they'd done the animation for. Oh, the hips are backwards. That's okay, I don't care. Um, unless the animation is exact for the exact kind of character I've been making, I'm not going to be able to, uh, to take advantage of them. The only time you want to get stock animations is um, when you either need a lot of animations or you're just busting something out as rapidly as possible. But in my case, the movement of the mech is actually the core element of the gameplay. Uh, the movement of the mech can be a, you know, it's, it's sort of as core as how Mario moves. So uh, you don't have a Mario game where you just import a random platforming movement characteristic because then you'll have someone that doesn't move quite right. So just like the people who make Mario have to specifically animate him and make him move to be exactly uh, exactly balanced for that Mario feel, I've got to make the my own custom animations for the mech that give it that own specific mech feel. And actually a big part of that is going to be in IK, which is pro only, but uh, we won't get there this episode. In fact, I'm not even going to show you animations this episode. But I will show you animations next episode, and uh, and then I might do uh, might go back to the world after that. Um, hopefully... I might have to create myself a custom, a custom character controller. Well, anyhow, um, I know a lot of you don't give a shit about third party or third third care. Don't have third care. Uh, third. Uh, your cameras don't float behind your character. You're first person. Uh, and so all of this might seem pretty boring and stupid, but if you make an enemy, these are the same kind of of methods you would use to make an enemy, unless you plan on making your enemy like out of bricks in your game engine and then trying to animate them, and that's actually more work. Um, if you do want to do that, I suggest you make the brick-like character in Blender, um, 
and then just move him into Unity and pretend that you made him in the game world because making your own character editor is a pain in the ass. Uh, so if you want to build monsters, then that's how you do it. The same way I built this mech, except for I'm using the mech as a first as the as the player character, and you'd be using them as monsters. That's it.